In order for us to vibrate on the highest of frequencies possible, we have to remove fear. And I know often we hear people talk about removing fear and it seems like this really big daunting task. Sometimes it appears as something impossible and I'm here to tell you that it's absolutely possible. One of the first steps to removing fear is acknowledging that the fear exists. You have to sit down with yourself, look yourself in the eyes, in the mirror, and acknowledge all of your fears. Not just your superficial fears, all of your fears. You have to write them down. You have to name them. Sometimes you'll need to speak them aloud. But the first step to removing fear is acknowledging your fears. I know that I'm afraid of so many things and that's okay. Removing fear actually is a lifelong process and that's really all there is to it. So when people talk about vibrating on the highest of frequencies and then they instruct you to now go and remove your fear, understand that removing your fear is going to be a lifelong process. You aren't going to just wake up and be unafraid of everything. What you will be capable of is acknowledging the fact that you feel fear, you are afraid, but the fear won't stop you from moving forward. That's what people are talking about when they're instructing you to remove fear. You have to be aware of your thoughts at all times. I know that people talk about the subconscious a lot, and we honestly aren't speaking about it enough. See, no matter what it is that you're doing, you're always thinking about something else. And your subconscious, I believe, is far more important than your conscious mind. Our subconscious mind is the one that is truly training us and conditioning us to believe what it is that we hold true. So on a conscience level, you may say you've gotten rid of fear. You're no longer afraid. But on the subconscious level, you you won't do certain things, right? People talk about having irrational fears. They're not really irrational. Most of the time, irrational fears stem from a subconscious memory that has been locked away because it was so traumatic. And so now you don't know why you don't want to wear the color orange, right? There are people who are afraid of certain colors or words or foods, and that seems irrational to others, but the truth of the matter is they are doing all that they can to protect themselves. So you have to be aware of your thoughts because you don't want your you don't want your subconscious thoughts to be so negative that they can take control of your life. Your subconscious mind is the mind that I believe truly rules you what you're really going to do, how you really feel, what you really want is being decided subconsciously. So this is why you need to be aware of your thoughts at all times. I've learned something recently, a new routine that I'm going to be incorporating because we're all on this journey together. And that is setting my intentions with the sunrise. See, there's a lot of energy that's happening all around you at all times. You're never not sharing energy with something else. You could be sharing energy with the tree, with the grass. You're always sharing energy with the things that you are around, whether it be a person or a plant or an animal 
You're always sharing energy with the things that you are around. That includes the sun, the moon, the stars. It includes the clouds and the sky. It includes everything because everything has an energy. Setting your intentions with the sun is one of the most powerful things that you can do because you're a child of the sun. You absorb light. So if you want to set intentions for your day, for your week, for the year, just in general, one of the best things to do is to set those intentions when the sun is rising. Now, you could be like me and what I will do, which is literally Googling when is sunrise and making sure that I am up a couple of minutes before sunrise just so I can, you know, splash some water on my face, eat a, eat a banana or something, just kind of get myself centered and ready and nourished before I start to write down my intentions and speak my intentions aloud to the sun. What I learned from an amazing, an amazing teacher, someone that I look up to and like to listen to, Isis Wisdom, is that when you're setting your intentions with the sunrise, you should be speaking to the sun and you should be telling the sun, proclaiming to the sun, this is your child. I am calling out to you. This is your child. I am calling out to you. So after you write your intentions, you should be speaking your intentions aloud to the sun. So face the sun however you can. If you have a window, if you don't have a window in your bedroom or where you're writing these things down, you could step outside. If you don't want to step outside, just face in the general direction of where you think the sun would be at that moment and speak these words aloud to the sun. You know, it's so interesting that we people in general uh, always want to talk about praying and, and giving reverence and manifesting, but we never want to say these things out loud. There's a lot of emphasis on writing things down, but there seems to be almost no emphasis on speaking those very same things aloud. It's beautiful to write down your intentions. It's beautiful to script out your life and architect your life. You need to also be speaking it aloud. Because when you're speaking it aloud, you're never speaking to yourself only. Like I said earlier, there's always energy that you're sharing with something or someone else. You're always around energy. You're sharing the energy with the planet. So... If you would like something from the universe, go ahead and ask. Verbalize that. If you would like something from your ancestors, go ahead and ask and verbalize that. If you would like something from yourself, go ahead and ask and verbalize that. Yes, speak to yourself aloud when you want things from yourself. If there are areas of your life that you're trying to improve upon, Speak that aloud to yourself. You have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice and you should be utilizing that voice as often as you can. This planet, the earth, the one that we all come from, the one that we are all on is feeding us so any energy that we're putting out the universe is going to only give right back to us and so collective energy is something that i've recently want wanting to get more study on something that i'm reading about more because it's so easy to get caught up on how every individual action is affecting your individual life, but forgetting that all the actions you take in your life will never only impact you. So what is the collective energy? Or what would be the response in collective energy 
to your decisions. All right? So we're looking to reach our highest vibrational frequency. We're looking to remove fear. We're being aware of our thoughts. And we're setting our intentions when the sun is rising. We have to be more comfortable with calling out for help. I know that I'm someone who shies away from help. I don't like to ask for it. I don't even like to want it. And I'm working on releasing that. My not wanting to ask for help comes from a place of fear. I know that I don't like asking for help because asking for help to me is an admission that I cannot do something. And that's not true at all. And I think a lot of black women struggle asking for help because for so long we've been sold the narrative that we should be doing everything alone. Not just that we can, but we should. I think for so long we've been fed a story that help is not something we should be seeking. We are to be able to do it by ourselves because we always have. And if you fall outside of that, then you are lacking. And what I'm working on becoming more comfortable with is being a black woman who will ask for help and who takes her time. I'm not interested in being rushed to do things. I'm not interested in rushing through my life. I've been sitting down and having these quiet moments where I'm just working on getting comfortable being, just being, getting comfortable existing on this land. It's, it's a very odd, um, privilege that I have to be a black American. And I know that black people aren't ones to often speak of the privileges we have by being black Americans. The privileges do exist. I identify, or I should say, I can identify that, yes, even with all of the oppression, I still have privileges over other people of the diaspora due to my being American. And and that can be a struggle. That can be an internal warfare. And that can be an, an uncomfortable feeling. And so what I've been working on is I've been working on how I'm going to address that in my own life and be comfortable with being because... I was born here and I have no intentions of running or fleeing from this land, especially not when it belongs to me and it belongs to everyone else that looks like me. So when we talk about manifesting for black women, before we can even begin to write down the affirmation We have to be affirmed in being. And that right there is the shadow work that you have to do. And shadow work is not easy. And it's not often fun. You are with yourself, every part of yourself, the dark parts the parts you hide, right? The parts you show. 
The parts you like and the parts you don't like. The parts that you like and other people don't like. And so you don't understand why they don't like it because you love it. You actually think it's one of your most redeeming qualities, right? You have to sit with that. Doing your shadow work and doing your inner child work right now in this current time, it, it, they're like it's like buzzwords, right? I don't even like the word buzzword because I think that all that means is maybe you just came on to something a little bit later, but it's not a it's not a sudden trend. It's something people have always been doing. You've just now found it, and that's a beautiful thing. I'm always glad when people are led to something that teaches them about themselves. Doing your shadow work, sitting down with yourself, Addressing the parts of yourself that you lock away because you think people won't accept it, because you know you don't accept it, has to be done. And this is another process that honestly is lifelong. You're going to always be returning to your shadow. The shadow self will always be with you. Your shadow is always with you. Your shadow follows you everywhere. So be sure that you have control over your shadow. I think when we talk about spiritual journeys and growth, people want to suddenly enter these enlightened states and stay there. Right? People want to come to this holy understanding of themselves and everyone else around them and all peoples and humanity and they want to reach this holy state and then they want to stay there now although I'm not a Christian Christ was a real man even Christ flipped a table when he was angry Christ rose his voice at people Christ felt anger Christ knew shame, right? So I don't understand why we put ourselves in these positions that we could never fill, right? You write these things down in a notebook, in a journal, knowing that that's not it, though. Why... Why do you want to manifest being the perfect you? Why not manifest being the healthiest and happiest you? Happy is not something that is a constant, as life would have it. Happy is a fleeting moment. It's a feeling It's a state of being that you're in from time to time. I think people are more content throughout life than they are happy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right? There's nothing wrong with being content with where you are and where you're going. What I am coming to understand for myself as I delve deeper into manifesting, manifesting as a black woman, what all that means is that I am greater than the spirit of fear. It's something that Isis speaks about very often. You are greater than the spirit of fear. Once again, everything has an energy. So fear is just not a feeling there, there's a spirit of fear that a person can be carrying, a spirit of anxiety, right? People carry that energy with them. So I don't want to be carrying a spirit of fear. Feeling fear is not a bad thing. Feeling fear means you are alert and aware of circumstances and situations, But to have a spirit of fear means that 
you are ex- almost you are expecting for things not to go right. So when you are expecting for things not to go right and they don't go right, what happens? You become more fearful. So what you are doing with a spirit of fear is manifesting an energy of fearfulness around you. So then other things become afraid of you because you're afraid of them. You're just afraid in general. So a spirit of fear is what you are greater than. Fear should not rule you. And I'm a black woman, I'm a dark-skinned black woman. I know fear. I understand fear. I've walked side by side with fear. And I've also been dragged by spear. Fear isn't stronger than me, though. Fear doesn't know me better than I know myself. Now, fear may walk alongside me when it is beneficial to me. But when it is not of my benefit to be fearful, and really, when I say be fearful, I really just mean to be aware. Right? When it is of no benefit to me to be, like, anxious in that way, then fear got to walk behind me. And I'm talking, like, eight trillion paces behind me, right? You only need to catch up when I'm in a situation where you need to be making my senses go off in that way. Otherwise, get thee behind me. That is how I am approaching fear now. You you can't allow things outside of yourself to find you. And I have been working on this. <sighs> For a long time, not allowing people outside of me to define me. When you're beginning to manifest consciously, because here's the thing. You're always manifesting, whether or not you quote unquote believe in manifestation. You can believe in it or not believe in it. You're always doing it. You're always attracting things towards you. Allowing people outside of yourself, allowing energies outside of your own to influence your thought and feelings of self is very dangerous. I struggle with this the most when it comes to family because family is sold to us as everything and more (laughs) family is sold to us as something that we cannot leave behind something that should be held in the most highest of regard and esteem no matter how you are treated by and for a lot of people i think more people than we would care to admit as a collective Family is one of the most painful things in their lives. Family is who supposedly knows you best. So when family judges you harshly, that's a huge damper on your energy. It's actually very draining. And... I have, for a very long time, allowed the energy of family make me question who I am, what I am capable of, and who I have been. Sometimes the greatest respect, the greatest respect that you can show family when they have hurt you is to leave them alone because it's it's a respect and honor unto yourself we don't have to engage with things we don't like 
that includes people. And that includes people who happen to be related to you. You don't have to engage in things you don't like. Manifesting what you want in your life, I feel, becomes easier. Consciously manifesting becomes easier when you're no longer engaging with things you don't like. I've deleted Instagram off my phone. I'm going to stay off Instagram intermittently for the rest of the year. So right now, I'm going to stay off Instagram for about two weeks. Then I'll probably go back on, just check on some things. And then I'll get off again for a month. And I'll probably go back and forth like that until the end of the year. I've done this before. I've actually stayed off Instagram completely for months at a time. This is something I do very regularly now. I mean, this is something that I now feel is part of my routine, like a part of my self-care routine my my constant self-care routine is taking breaks from indulging in others energy because sometimes it feels very voyeuristic in a way that I don't I didn't sign up for <laughs> um and so I don't always want to be beholden to this social contract of voyeurism So I try to take regular breaks from social media. When you are manifesting consciously, like when you are sitting down and saying, these are the things that are happening, right? Because when we manifest, we don't say, this is what I want. We say, this is what I have. This is what I have, and I'm so thankful for its arrival. This is what I have. You have everything that you are manifesting because it is there with you now, and it has always been on its way to you. Speaking in present tense makes things real. It makes things true. When you manifest, you manifest in real time. Now, it's not to say you can't say, I will get this, I want that, this is on the way to me. You can absolutely use that language when you're manifesting. I personally feel that it is extremely powerful when you speak in the present tense, regardless of if you actually have the thing you're speaking about. It's there. And the reason that it's there is because you thought about it. I always, I will always believe that if you can think about it, it's already there. If you can think about having that house, that house is, has been built for you. That house already exists for you. That house is there. That house is there. That house exists. You have it. You have that house. When you'll be in the house, how the house will come, how the house will be paid for, furnished, it doesn't matter. You have the house. You thought about the house. You visualize the house. You have the house. So enjoy having the house. And then I promise you, one day you'll be waking up in the house. And you'll realize you've been in that house longer than you had been anywhere else in the world. Because you've always had that house. That's manifestation to me. For me, that's manifestation. This has been the first episode in a series that I'm doing. Manifesting for black women. Manifestation is real. We are manifesting all the time. Whether or not we're calling what we are doing manifestation, the law of attraction, however else we are changing the language, what we're all saying is energy out is energy received, is energy in, is energy given. 
I hope that you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope that today's episode made you think. This episode is about why we manifest. And I hope that you're able to connect the dots as I was speaking. Please do pay a visit to Isis Wisdom here on YouTube. And tap into your higher self. Reaching your highest state of being, a higher vibrational frequency, is possible. You're always elevating and your frequency is always being raised. Just remember that you can be more intentional about it. And when you become more intentional about it, Everybody else and everything else around you becomes more intentional. Nothing is a coincidence. And there's something to be learned from every experience and interaction. Even the most minor of conversation you have with a stranger is a very important message. So listen, this is why we manifest. You already have everything. Ashe.